Tender love. It was a beautiful day on the island of Kildor. And Lady is a hard working engine. Lady is getting started for the grand Kinma Shed's reopening. Thanks to his on his way too. He's carrying the six of the box for to the left. At last, Spencer arrived. You're too darn good, Spencer. Says driver. I don't care if he's he's pathetic or not. Said Spencer's fireman. What's a tender love? <coughs> Coughs, Thomas. <laughs> Rosie must smell some flowers. Oh well, guess it's a face. It's a face. I will go away. Thomas rolled ang angrily away. Hey, where did Thomas go? said Percy. Maybe he just ran away, replied Toby, at a duck. I should have known that this party must be awful. Soon, must move to a better area. And the table light. Spencer's getting ready. Spencer with other other noises her table. At last he made it to a stop. This isn't a great stop. Shouted shouted Spencer's fireman. What a war. Are there any survivors inside? There are. Why don't you ask me then? Argued Rosie. Give me a break. This is love, not a conversation. Hmm. Lady arrived. You must have blocked the turntable, Spencer. Ha 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 ha. Clockwork, fool. Argued Spencer. That wasn't nice, said Toby. That was immature, said Rosie. That was completely inappropriate, said Thomas. That was disobedient, said Stephen. Just pathetic, added Percy. Disgraceful, added Gordon. Disgusting, spluttered James. Idiotic, says, says lady. Okay, folks, added Thomas. Clear the area. Now, clear the area. Rosie, James, you stay. Yay, we can stay. Out, everyone, out. Soon, everyone left, except for Rosie and James, because they can stay. That night, Thomas and James are fighting about tender love. I'm losing my mind, says James. This is actually a pathetic place to live in. I know, said Thomas. This means war. You don't have to do war again. We are going to, uh, do some tender love. <laughs> so Thomas threw a big tantrum about tender love. Thomas, Thomas, stop! Uh. James, 
You know what this means, James. What, Thomas? You're out. No, Thomas, you can't do this to me. I thought you could tell me to stay. I told you that you're... Warning. You may be going. Out! But I can't, Thomas. Out! Why, Thomas? Said Rosie. We need to get going. I do not want tender love. I want to consume coal. That's it, Thomas. You're dead. Wait, stop. And so, James was off the track. Wait, that's not the ending! Oh, do you mean this would be the happy ending? No! Well, okay then, fine. The next morning, James is about to be in charge. Thomas, I want you to take some boxcars of dynamite. Boxcars of dynamite? What's that? It's dynamite. They're bombs. They're nuclear bombs. <gasps> nuclear bombs? Yo, Thomas. Relax, added James. You can't blow them up right now. You are going to do some terrorism here. <gasps> terrorism? But that's stupid. Shut up, replied James. Now get to work. Okay, okay, then fine. So Thomas went to work and backed up to dynamite box car. Be careful, Thomas, said his driver. They're going to explode in about three in about three hours. I'll get to work, said Thomas. Thomas went away. I swear I must trust James, said Thomas. I don't care what Sir Tom Hat says or anything. It's what I could do to get them in danger. Soon, Thomas went away. Oh, Flying Scotsman's here! It's a cameo of Flying Scotsman. Down the line, the toolbox had blocked Toby's line. Tom Thomas went going. Stop, he cried. His driver applied the brake, but it was too late. I surrender, said Thomas. These bombs are blowing. They're late, said, said Toby. What have you done? I did not do anything. I just let the bombs explode, cried Thomas. Really? Is that how it happened? Soon, Thomas was rescued. And all engines may not trust the rules, even if Sir Tom Hat's on break.